can move in the room. Okay. Uh, this is our last session with the Center for Social Science Research at St. Michael's College, and I want to welcome Professor Nagrini Nagrini, uh, who will be talking about Benfin's Law. He looks for unusual relationships and databases, and uh, um, he'll tell us more about that. And so, anyways, uh, we have a great crowd today, a mixture of students and faculty. And uh, again, thank you very much for coming to share your ideas with the community of St. Michael's College. In Colchester, Vermont. In Colchester, Vermont. <laughs> I might say a long way from South Africa, uh, the birthplace of Professor Nagrini. Numbers varies one part in our lives, and we might not think this is the case. For example, you wake up because it says 6.30 on the dial, 10.30 on the dial. Uh, certain dates have relevance to us. Our bank accounts have numbers, our highways have numbers, we have telephone numbers, we have numbers on our house. Indeed, uh, if you put on CNBC, you would see a television station dedicated entirely to numbers. So today we're going to talk about numbers, and so I think it's rather fitting that we start off with a reading from the book of numbers. Numbers, good. Chapter one. This is the oldest list of numbers that I could get, and it said all the men, 20 years old and more, who were able to serve in the army, were listed one by one according to the records of their clans and families, and the number from the tribe of Reuben was 46,500. So I will ask you, what patterns do you see in the list of numbers? All right, tell you what I will do. I will just pretend this is my 8.30 class. <laughs> I will ask the question, pause briefly, and then answer it myself. <laughs> That way we just cut out the middle band and we can actually get on with it. So, you might notice some patterns, and I tell you what, we'll come back to this uh, at the end. We're going to move ahead some 3,000 years to Frank Benton, who was a physicist at the GE Research Laboratories in Schenectady, New York, and he noticed that the first few pages of these log table books were more worn than the last few pages. Some highly technical stuff. From this he deduced that he was using the first few pages more than the last few pages. However, the first few pages gave us the logs of numbers with low first digits. And since he was using the front of the book more than the back of the book, he figured maybe in this world there are more numbers with low first digits than with high first digits. He then set out on a crusade. I believe it took him six years, 20 lists of numbers, 20,229 observations. These are numbers from diverse sources, drainage area of rivers, populations, scientific constants all the numbers from an issue of Reader's Digest, uh, American League, death rate, fun guy, Benford, never one to miss a light-hearted opportunity when it presented itself. And indeed, he analyzed the first digits of these numbers, and it turned out that 30.6% of these numbers started with a 1. 18.5% of the numbers started with a 2. If we add those two together, no calculator needed, we'll get 49.1% of the numbers starting with a 1 or a 2. This means that the other, oh, I can't do these tough, complicated calculations, <laughs> the other whatever percent started with 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Well, he actually just left it at that. He said, this is an observation which I made, and this is the end. Well, he made some assumptions about numbers. Number one, that if we take our list of numbers, and we went from the smallest to largest, we get this thing called a geometric sequence, well known to our math students sitting to my right. We then did a little bit of calculus. Up top there is calculus. Calculus, amazingly, one of the favorites of accounting students. Whenever I meet some of my class students, they say to me, I wish I could go back for more calculus classes. Those are the ones I crave. The experience, same thing in our economic courses. And <laughs> economics. And in chemistry. And chemistry. <laughs> But this is back to calculus. And then he did his calculus and came up with what we've grown to love and adore and call Benford's Law. And indeed, under Benford's Law, it says that I expect 30.1% of my numbers to start with a 1, 17.6% to start with a 2, and the poor old nine only expected as a first of a leading digit some 4.6% of the time. So again, we will have a quiz afterwards. No multiple choice. Please memorize that list. <laughs> Why does Benefit's Law actually work? Well, we can do one of two things. I can give you the intuitive, the intuitive explanation, or we can actually go through the calculus. It's your call, I'm a professional, I'm here for you today. Don't let the size of the font uh, sway yours. 
<laughs> just you choose based on how you feel. Any suggestions, Dan? Then two in the next Then two in the next event. We'll start with the two. We'll think of the Dow Jones Industrial Average of a thousand points. I think it was George Bush who said a thousand points of Dow, something like that. And it was a long time ago, 1988. And a thousand points of Dow has got a first digit one. It keeps that first digit one all the way up to 2000. So we have a one from one to 2000. What percentage increase do I need to go from 1000 to 2000? I just pretend it's 8.30, 50%. <laughs> when we get to 5,000, we keep our first digit 5 all the way from 5,000 to 6,000, and to go from there, we only need a 20% increase. At 9,000, we get a first digit 9, and we keep that first digit 9 all the way from 9,000 to 10,000, but we only need an 11% increase in the Dow before we change first digits, and we're back to a first digit 1 when we're at 10,000. And that is the intuitive explanation, that is why the Dow will have the first digit one for far longer than any other first digit. What did the Dow actually do? 1,000 in November 1972, and we can actually see that as we moved through the late 90s, we were picking up those thousands at a rather rapid pace. It is rather sad, today is April 1st of the year 2008, we have a Dow at about 12,000, and we clicked over to 10,000 in March of 1999. 10 years. And we've gone from 10,000 to 12,000. This doesn't help our retirement one bit. <laughs> so, that's the intuitive explanation as to why this should work. Put Ben to floor, work every list of numbers. No. Number one, back, forward. <laughs> Number one, my list should be describing the size of some phenomena. So I definitely need large numbers to mean large things and small numbers to mean small things. Number two, no built-in maximum or minimum. My numbers are somewhat range-bound. Something is constraining the range. Uh, Benefit's law won't work either. For example, my stockbroker many years ago had a uh, minimum fee of $75 per transaction. So if we took all the uh, fees on all these stock transactions for the month, we get lots of first digit seven, so that wouldn't work too well. And then assigned numbers, and assigned number is a number that we use as a label. And we flat out love to use numbers as labels. Highway numbers, room numbers, flight numbers, bank account numbers, and the like. Well, let's have a look at some data that follows Brentford.